This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. And you may be seated. <clears throat> so I feel it's, it's kind of appropriate to have this gospel text. This is uh, the first sermon, the first official sermon uh, that we have of Jesus. He's beginning his ministry, and he begins it by preaching this sermon, kind of outlining what his ministry is going to be all about. So it's, it's his first sermon, you might say. And it's a very famous sermon as well. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. And they call it a Sermon on a Mount because, well, he preached it on a mountain. Not just a clever title, but he literally preached this sermon on a mountain. And the sermon goes from Matthew chapter 5 all the way to Matthew chapter 7. So it's a good chunk of the Gospel of Matthew. And highly encourage you this week, pull out your Bibles and take a look at this sermon on the Mount, from Matthew chapter 5 all the way uh, to Matthew chapter 7. It's his first sermon. Now, I kind of feel like this is my first sermon here at Christ the King as well, so it's kind of appropriate. I feel that way because this past Wednesday, uh, you all voted uh, to make me your senior pastor. And for that, I want to say thank you. Uh, I've had some time to reflect on that over uh, the last few days, and uh, what I want to say to you is that this is uh, an amazing congregation, and it's an honor to be your pastor and to serve with, with all of you uh, in reaching out with the good news of the gospel. Um, life is, is really short, and it's important to tell people that you care about that that you care about them and, and love them. That's so incredibly important. And so that's something that I've, I've tried to practice in my life. I've learned a lot of uh, lessons along the way that, that life is short. And so I wanna take this opportunity to say that I care about all of you. I love this congregation, I love all of you. And please know that as I go forward, uh, I will do my best job to care for you and uh, to be your pastor. I won't always do a perfect job, so for those times I would, I would ask for your forgiveness, but I will do my best uh, to be your pastor and to, to lead this congregation. And I want to say thank you to our staff as well. Uh, we've got an incredible staff, and it's an honor to serve alongside of them. Uh, just wonderful people. I look forward to coming to church uh, each and every day to find out what's going on in their lives. So. Uh, I stand before you uh, feeling uh, very fortunate and very blessed uh, to be your pastor and to be a part of this, of this congregation. So, so thank you. Thank you for not voting me off the island, <laughs> but rather, rather calling, me, calling me as your pastor. So I give, I give thanks, thanks for that. So today I, wanna, I want to talk about foundations. Um, when we were in Jamaica this past week, we showed up and there was a foundation built for us, a strong foundation built for us to build that house uh, that we uh, were able to raise money for uh, in our congregation. Uh, and then I was also able to help out build a smaller foundation for the bathroom. Uh, we put a six by eight bathroom on there and so I helped uh, the concrete guy, the mason, build that foundation, and he took great care 
to make sure that that foundation was true and square and plumb and all of those good things. And it really struck me uh, the importance of a strong foundation. And that is true whether you are building a house or a building. It's also true when you are working on building church ministry. So it's important to have a strong foundation when you are building a church, when you're building your ministry. So I want to speak to that whole notion of making sure to have a strong foundation. But first I want to tell you a parable to illustrate the, important, uh, the importance of a strong foundation. Now, hopefully you're not sick of me yet. This is my first sermon, though, so we get to start over. But I've, I've, I've got another plumbing story, so hopefully you're not sick of my plumbing stories. I, I feel like I've been stuck in a rut lately with these uh, stories around plumbing, but this is, uh, this is a good one. It's a parable that I based on a number of different experiences that uh, I had when I had uh, my illustrious plumbing career. It wasn't that illustrious, but um, it was fun. Um, so this is called the parable of the strong foundation. So one day there were a number of tradespeople. They were sitting around and they were having lunch. And there was an electrician there, a plumber there, a framer. Uh, there was a tinner, those people that are responsible for putting in the air ducts in houses. There was a flooring guy, a painter. And then there was also a concrete contractor who specialized in block foundations. So they were all sitting around and they were having a debate about whose job is most important. So the electrician was saying that his job is the most important because he provides electricity for the house so people can operate their computers and have lights and a stove, they can cook food. Electricians, they're the most important people when it comes to building a house. And then the framer said, no, we're the most important people because we got to build the structure of the house. So you can uh, put all of your wires through the studs and your pipes and all of those things. We are the most important people. And then the plumber said, no, we're the most important people. We'll bring water to the house and the wastewater away. The house would really stink if it wasn't for plumbers. We're the most important people in the house. And the flooring guy and the painter, they tried to chime in, and there was this whole debate going on. And then the concrete guy, the guy that's responsible for the foundations, he was kind of off in the corner smirking. And he said, I don't mean to be arrogant, guys, but I think I have the most important job on the construction site because it's up to me to provide a good and strong foundation. If that's not done, everything that's built on top, of the, on top of the house will simply all fall apart, and the house might end up like this. If we go to the next picture. So I think you would agree with me that it is important to have a strong foundation, and that's true whether you are building a house or whether you are working on growing and building your church ministry. And the gospel lesson that we have for today was Jesus' way of building a strong foundation, outlining what his ministry was going to be all about. And as we look to this new year into 2017, and we think about ways of growing Christ the King, as we think uh, about ways of building a good and strong ministry here at this church, it's important to consider and give thought to our foundation. We need to have a strong foundation, and we base that foundation on God. We base it on scripture. And our gospel lesson for today can help us think about our strong foundation that we need. And we have just the very beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. It's called the Beatitudes. And I think the Beatitudes can be an important tool for us as we are constructing our foundation for ministry. We might think of each beatitude as a block in our foundation for building the ministry here at our church. So I'd like to review with you all of these different blocks, these beatitudes or blessings, and to think about how they might provide a foundation for us 
in our congregation. So beatitude number one, or we could call it block number one in the foundation, is the following. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So the church, and the church is you and me, the church is a people. The church is for all people who are poor in spirit. And I know all of us have taken a turn at being poor in spirit. It's a part of being human. The church is for all of those, for all of us that have be been beaten down by the world and the problems of the world. The church is for those who are simply exhausted by life, and we get exhausted by life for a myriad of reasons. So that's block number one as a part of our church foundation. Block number two, or beatitude, or blessing number two, says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. The church is built for those who mourn and who experience losses of all kinds. And I look around the room, and I know that all of you have experienced loss of some kind. Know the church is a place to come to mourn, and the church is a place to come to be comforted. Block number three, or beatitude number three, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. The church is built for those who are meek. And it is, we're called, we're called to go out into the world to be humble and to be gentle of spirit. Block number four, or beatitude number four. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The church is built for those who are working to understand and to know God. And that's a process that continues our whole life. God is at work in the church to put us in a right relationship with him. We strive, we strive for righteousness. Block number five, beatitude number five. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. The church is built to be a place of caring, a place of empathy, compassion, and forgiveness. The church is to be a place where mercy is given and received. Block number six. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The church is built to be a place of honesty, of transparency, and where there is no hidden agenda. And all that we desire to do, all we are called to do, is to reach out with the good news of the gospel and to work to please God in all that we do. Those who are pure in heart, the Bible says, will see God. Block number seven, beatitude number seven. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. The church is built to be a place of peace and where we are always working for reconciliation, where we're always working to bring peace into the life of the church and into uh, the lives of, of one another. We work to bring peace and reconciliation, but that can be a really hard one sometimes. Block number eight. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. The church is built to be a place where we strive to do the right thing and to care for our neighbor even if that means being persecuted for it. The church is built on the courage to always work to do the right thing. So I think that these are really important building blocks to consider as we look at a new year of ministry here at Christ the King into 2017. I think this is a great time in the life of our congregation to take a step back and to reflect on what, is, what makes up our foundation as a church and what makes up our foundation for the ministry that we do. And I think the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount can be a great, great central text for us to come back to and to consider. What does it mean to be a church? What does it mean to be a congregation? What does it mean to serve God? And I think this is an excellent tool that we will come back to, to think about this foundation that we have as, as a church. And as we consider this scripture passage and 
think about the future of our congregation. We'll work on other things, other ways of envisioning, envisioning what the church will look like as we move forward into the future. And one of the things that we want to do is to put together uh, a visioning committee uh, to do some strategic planning as we move forward. And most importantly, that strategic planning will be all about focusing on reaching out with the good news of the gospel and our ministry here in this place. And we'll figure out how to care for our neighbors and for our community, how we're going to continue to do that work. And then we'll also spend some time taking a look at our finances and making sure that we're utilizing our resources in a most effective way. And also look at ways of paying down our mortgage, all of those financial things as well. And we want to be transparent and to share uh, the work of that committee and would invite you uh, to join that work if you're interested in spending some time doing some planning and thinking about what Christ the King in the future might, might look like. So we're excited about, about that work. So I want to end by, by saying this. And just kind of how I began this sermon. This church is an amazing place. This church has had some ups and downs along the way and challenges along the way. Yet despite those ups and downs and challenges, this church has grown and thrived. And to be honest with you, I am in awe of this church. And I was thinking about that very fact at our annual meeting this past Wednesday. You see, I've been to a lot of annual meetings in my day. I grew up as a pastor's kid, so I grew up going to annual meetings with my dad, and I knew it was always annual meeting time because my dad would have a little bit of anxiety. My dad's always a calm person, but whenever the annual meeting came around, he'd always have a little bit of anxiety. At my previous congregation, we had four churches plus a parish, five annual meetings every year, that I had to attend. In five years, I got 25 years of annual meeting experience. So imagine that. I've been to a lot of annual meetings. And I got to tell you, our annual meeting that we had on Wednesday was probably one of the most, if not the most, amazing annual meeting I had been to. And I am serious about that. It was so incredible how people came together to discuss the last year, to talk about what happened, to discuss the budget and finances. And then we had people in our congregation share, which I thought was extremely helpful. And they challenged us and spoke truth and love, shared words that needed to be said. And that was a pretty amazing thing. I was absolutely in awe. All the things that people shared were shared in love. And then I thought, what in the world is going on here? Why is this annual meeting going so well? Well, I don't know, but this place seems to have a lot of people who focus on being faithful. And at the end of the day, that's perhaps the most important thing, to be faithful. To be faithful to each other, to be faithful to the gospel, and to be faithful to God. So let's keep doing that as we continue to build our future as we continue to think about our foundation, as we continue to reach out with the good news of the gospel. Let's continue to be faithful. Let's focus on our foundational principles, and the Beatitudes can help us with that. And let's continue to reach out with the good news. And let's continue to build. I'm having fun. How about you? Amen. <laughs>